Hello and welcome to today's video where we're looking at lights and shapes in depth again and we're covering rule 24, towing and pushing. Now rule 24 is one of the longest ones that we're going to have to do but don't worry we're going to break it down and we're just going to cover it piece by piece. So rule 24, towing and pushing. It starts off by talking about what a power driven vessel while towing needs to exhibit. And it says instead of the lights prescribed in rule 23, A1 and 2, and rule 23 of course is the lights of a power driven vessel, if you haven't looked at that video already, I would go back and check it out first. Instead of the masthead lights, you've got to show basically two masthead lights in a vertical line, or if your tow is greater than 200 metres, three masthead lights in a vertical line. In addition, side lights, a stern light, a towing light vertically above the stern light, and if your tow is over 200 metres, a diamond shape where it can best be seen. Now that diamond is always going to correspond with 200 metres, so it's quite easy to remember. So in practice, what does that look like? If we take a look at this tugboat here, we know that as a normal power driven, they've got to have a masthead light, but if they're towing, they've got to have two masthead lights in a vertical line. Or, if that tows over 200 metres, three masthead lights in a vertical line and then side lights a stern light and then a towing light above that stern light next we're talking about pushing vessels that are rigidly connected to the thing they're pushing and in this case they've got to show just the lights of a power driven vessel so they've not got to show anything different if they're rigidly connected together if you're pushing ahead or towing alongside unless you're in that composite unit you just need to show two masthead lights in a vertical line. There is no option for that third masthead light. In this case, you can only show two, so there's nothing extra indicating length. In addition, side lights and a stern light. And you notice there's no towing light here. So these ones don't show a towing light. So if we go back to our tug diagram, we can see if they're going to be pushing ahead or towing alongside, they're just going to have those two masthead lights side lights and a stern light so they do look quite different to the tug that was towing a normal tow behind them a power driven vessel which is showing the masthead lights basically of a towing vessel needs to also comply with rule 23a2 and this is the rule that says if you're greater than 50 meters in length you need to show a second masthead light abaft of and higher than the first one so all this is saying is if you're a towing vessel you've still got to indicate if your vessel is greater than 50 meters. A vessel or object being towed, other than the ones that we're going to cover in a minute, which is inconspicuous or partly submerged, needs to exhibit side lights and a stern light. And if the length of the tow is greater than 200 meters, a diamond shape. You remember from the first paragraph, if it's more than 200 meters, that's where the diamond comes in. The easy way to think of this is think of a tug towing another vessel. Of course, the tug is going to be showing the lights of a towing vessel towing something greater than 200 metres in this case, and then the thing being towed is going to be showing the same lights it would as a power driven vessel, but it's not going to have its masthead lights on. So it's still got to show side lights and a stern light. And this applies regardless of the object being towed. Then we move on to the vessels that are being towed alongside or pushed. In this case, if they're in a group and lit as one vessel, if you're being pushed ahead, of course not part of a composite unit, you just need to exhibit side lights at the forward end. And then if you're being towed alongside, you need to exhibit side lights and a stern light. If you look at it in a diagram, this actually all makes sense. If you're being pushed ahead, you've just got those side lights. If you had your stern light on, you'd be blinding the tug. And then if you're being towed alongside, again you'll have those side lights, but then you'll also have that stern light. And then we're on to part G, which is inconspicuous and partly submerged vessels or objects. The lights that these show depend both on their breadth and on their overall length. If you're less than 25 meters, you just need to put an all round light at the forward end and at the after end, unless you're a dracone in which case you don't need the forward light. And by dracone we mean these kind of rubber bags filled with oil. I've never seen one myself, but if you have a dracone you don't need that all round one at the forward end. 
As soon as you get more than 25 metres in breadth, you need to add additional all-round lights at either side, so at the extremities of the breadth. If you're more than 100 metres long, then you need additional all-round lights so that the distance between the lights is not going to be greater than 100 metres. And then the day shape, you need a diamond shape at the aftermost extreme, and if you're more than 200 metres, a second diamond shape as far forward as you can. If we think of this in a diagram, it becomes a lot easier to understand. You're inconspicuous or partly submerged, you need an all round light at the forward end and at the after end. If you expand your breadth to be more than 25 metres, you need additional all round lights at the extremes of your breadth. And then if your length is greater than 100 metres, you need additional all round lights so that the distance between the lights will always be less than 100 metres. And then we're on to the exemptions. If it's impracticable for a vessel or object being towed to exhibit the lights that we've talked about, all possible measures shall be taken to light the vessel or object being towed, or at least to indicate its presence. And then finally, if you're towing another vessel and you don't normally engage in towing operations, you might find that you can't exhibit the lights you need to, and you're exempted from doing this if you're engaged in towing another vessel in distress or otherwise in need of assistance. However, all possible measures shall be taken to indicate the nature of the relationship between the towing vessel and the tow, as authorised by Rule 36, particularly by illuminating the tow line. And that brings us to the end of Rule 24. Hopefully you found the information today useful. Until next time, thank you for watching, and goodbye.